Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss SharePoint collections. Currently, I'm in a collection management page, which is found in the admin center in Office 365 or SharePoint Online. And currently, what we're looking at here is a number of collections. So what is a collection? A collection is a container that holds a variety of sites and is the, the, the uppermost container in that hierarchy. So if you had a number of sites that you wanted to collect together, you would put them in a collection and that collection is the uppermost container. That enables you to manage things like permissions and who can see those sites and various hierarchy elements such as what people can do and how people can use a variety of sites in a collection. These things we will discuss in uh, another video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a collection. So if I click on this button here, new, we're going to open a private collection. We're going to create it. So here we get a a title so we may say new collection the URL is already selected and we may give this a managed path uh, new collection and from here we have a variety of templates that we can choose from uh, for that collection and in this scenario we're just going to choose the team site we also can select what um, time zone it operates in and here uh, we can select the administrator for the collection. Now this is quite important um, because this person will be able to do a variety of of things in this collection that other people won't be able to do and will be the principal administrator of the collection. Also server resources depending on um, the amount of resources that you want to allocate in this scenario I'm just going to allocate 50 but you can really allocate as many resources as you require and the resources relate to the amount of processing power that is going to be given to this collection so depending on the number of users and the amount of use you may need to consider uh, a, a much higher number uh, in terms of resources but you can come back and edit this at another stage so if I click OK what should happen now is the collection should begin to be created and as you can see here the collection resources are set now at 50 uh, and the storage amount um, is the amount of gigabytes uh, to two decimal places of the data that you're going to store. Now the global resources are stored at the top here so this shows me that I have a terabyte of data available for storage. If I exceed that then obviously I'm going to have problems so if you're going to open something that's going to be used a great deal for things like images, videos and documents, you may need to consider your global resources that are shared across, across all of your collection. The same with the processing resources that we talked about here. I only have 75 resources available for processing, but should I suddenly decide that uh, one collection is going to get used more than another, I can simply come in and edit the amount of resources available uh, to collections that might not be used so much and reallocate those resources. Um, if that is not possible, then the other option that I've got is to come in here and actually buy more resources. Microsoft allows us to do that, either whether that's storage or whether that's processing power to, um, cre to provide more resources um, to uh, to a particular collection or a group of collections depending on, um, on what your needs are. So this can take up to 15 minutes uh, for the uh, collection to be initialized. Once the collection is initialized you will be able to simply click on it 
and navigate to the to the site and this will bring you into the initial page set up uh, menus available to you and res and applications pre-loaded this is very much SharePoint out of the box so I hope that explained a little bit about site collections um, and in further videos we will dig a bit deeper thank you for watching